This tree decided that it wanted to put roots down on both sides of the creek. Nos pintamos. En las fiestas tradicionales de las culturas uh -huh. se utiliza. Es muy bueno. That's really cool. That was this plant here. Uh, uh, ¿Qué es el nombre? Achote. Achote. ¿Y este? Ortiga. Ortiga. This one I didn't know any better and I came over and touched these flowers and it hurt. I mean, this thing stung the hell out of me. It's, it has spines all over it, but it's medicinal and it's good for your bones, I am told. Hola, it's Illuminosic. We are in the Amazon rainforest near Puyo, Ecuador. I'm here with Chris Kennedy. He runs an ethnobotanical garden. So we're gonna talk to him a little bit about what they're doing here and take a tour and have a look at some of the, the medicinal plants and talk about what the indigenous uses for them are. Yeah, welcome. This is the Omaeri Ethnobotanical Park. It's a place where we teach about the traditional uses of plants. The name Omaeri means nature of the rainforest in the Waurani language, one wondering. of the indigenous languages. No, it's not an acronym. Sometimes mm -hmm. people think it's an acronym. And um, the park was founded 27 years ago by my wife, who's a shawar. Her name's Teresa Shiki. She's a big expert in medicinal plants. She and two French women formed the Omaeri Foundation. They bought the 15 hectares when it was mostly all grass for cows. Then they started planting all the most important plants to Amazonian Indians. They've had time to grow. Now it almost looks like a natural forest. We also have this traditional house where we teach a little bit about the Shuar people and the Waurani people, two groups that were never conquered. So they still know exactly what their traditional life was like. Mm -hmm, that's very rare. Yes. <laughs> and um, uh, we do a walk with guides. The guide is explaining what the different plants are for. Sometimes it's an hour, sometimes longer. If people want to go into detail, it's good to plan on at least three hours. If you want to be all day, all morning, whatever people want. Um, sometimes people ask for only half an hour and then we just give that much information. The contribution for doing the walk is $3 for adults, $1.50 for students, it's discounts for large families, large groups, and each group should contribute at least $5, that's to cover the time of the guide, right? And we charge the same for foreigners and Ecuadorians. Um, so many places in Ecuador want to gouge the foreigner. <laughs> and, uh, and it's, it's really in bad taste, so we don't do that, and we keep the price really low so that the Ecuadorians can come, you know, and not go bankrupt and not be worried about, about the culture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of our main goals is, is that to get the word out, and, you know, especially in the Ecuadorian population, but the world population in general. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Let's, let's take a walk. Okay, very good. It's a melastome called Churunch in Schwar, and uh, it's tasty. It's it's um, sort of hyper acid, uh -huh. and it's good if we just are thirsty, or maybe we have a sore throat, or just want to chew on something. Nice. Oh wow, that's actually uh -huh. pretty good. Would you like some? Okay. Tangy, almost like rhubarb. Yeah, sort of that direction. It's a Comelinaceae. And it has flowers that sort of look almost like orchids. This one's forming its fruits already. And it's very important in the life of Shuar women. Mm -hmm. When uh, girls have their first menstruation, uh, the girl's mother will look for this plant and dig up all the little tubers, squeeze all the juice out, and bathe the girl, her whole body, in this juice. And it probably has physical effects on, on the woman, but the ceremonial value is that since the plant has lots of little potatoes it helps the, the girl have lots of children oh wow yeah right. uh, so it's like very a fertility warlike. fertility medicine yeah and they need they're they're very warlike so they need to keep the population exactly. booming they sure are very warlike they want an army of sons lots of people dying in warfare still traditionally yeah yeah, yeah. that's the spearing Absolutely. raids have yeah. more or less stopped correct R right <laughs> and um this is Wayusa. You've probably had it already. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is really important yeah. for the Quechua people, right? Well, more important for the Shuar than mm. the, the Quechua people have gotten it from the Shuar, sort of. Uh. And the, the, they'll say different, but the, the, 
It's a close relative to holly and to yerba mate. The uh -huh. Argentines drink all the time. It's got lots of caffeine and lots of other good things. Hmm. And um, so it gives us lots of energy. In contrast to coffee, it's actually good for you. Yeah, yeah. Makes your body stronger. In the case of women, it makes their fertility stronger. Right? Uh huh. And um, yeah, and the Schwar use it for many different things. The most surprising is that every morning at three, four, five o'clock in the morning, they drink all the tea that will go in until they vomit. And you might be thinking, no, thank you. How disgusting. We hate vomiting. Mm -hmm. But it's actually very helpful. It washes out of the stomach and the small intestine everything that didn't digest. I've actually done that after ayahuasca ceremonies with uh, shuar, shuar shamans. Oh, uh, that's good. Yeah, because most people don't. But it's very important because with ayahuasca, we interpret that it's pulling all kinds of garbage out of your body. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've, re you've noticed what you drink is super bitter, but what you vomit is horrible. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, and so it makes sense, you know, while it's in your body, it's pulling all these toxins out. They, they, they start pooling up in your stomach and your intestine. They can't sit there, so they got to come out. But it's not all going to come out. Right? right. And so after doing ayahuasca, it's good to do the stomach wash and get the last bits of all that out before going back to normal life and eating again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, it's also important to do it. In the wee hours of the morning, the day that you're going to take ayahuasca at night, to help make sure that your stomach's all empty. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't do it every day. We do it whenever we want. Sometimes more often with our patients. We help lots of uh, natural health patients here with uh, chronic physiological problems, women's issues, lots of different things. Nice. So these plants um, get used for medicinal purposes with people that need them. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah, we have lots of patients coming through. Nice. Yeah. It's a rainforest grass, and it's called shishink and shuar. It's the plant that the shamans use during uh, shamanic cleansing, right? Might be during the ayahuasca ceremony or separate. They get a whole bunch of these leaves, mm -hmm. and they fan the patient. They're collecting bad energies uh -huh. from the person, and then they throw them far away and they'll often blow them far away. Let me put this in your hand or someone's hand. Can you smell that? Yeah, it's almost like garlic. Yeah, it, it smells exactly like garlic and it's totally unrelated to garlic. It's wild garlic. Ajo de monte. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got the same substances in garlic. It's really good for blood circulation, respiratory issues, for treating cancer, for lots of different things. Um, we can boil up the leaves or the stem, all depends on what's going on. This is a wild onion. It's actually related to onions, but doesn't smell like onions. Uh, down in the ground, it's got a normal looking onion bulb, only it's not for eating. Oh it's yeah. It's for treating snake bite. Oh. They get the raw juice from this and other plants. They squeeze it out, apply it externally, drink it internally every day for two or three weeks. They can cure cases that the Western doctor would have to amputate. They leave the person intact. The full detail on how to do that is not in any book. It's still passed from generation to generation among them. Yeah, this one is called Kunapi in the Shuar language. Here's its name. So it and, has some uh, kind of lime-like fruits here or something, right? Yeah, they, sort of, they look like that, but they're very, very different. They, when they're ripe and turn yellow, um, they're a little bit like granadilla. I'm not sure if you're familiar with granadilla. Big seeds with um, sweet pulp around them. But the, the key thing about kunapi, it's very good for sinus congestion. When people can't breathe freely. Oh, nice. Sometimes it makes a big headache. We make uh, tea with the bark. We snort a little bit up the nose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stings for two minutes. Gets all the garbage out. I have it ready, but... It's setting at home, but if you want to try it, we can uh, get some fresh off the plant. We can do that. Sure, later. yeah, I would do yeah. that, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and like I said, I normally have it ready, but... I've taken yeah. tobacco in the nose. Wow, that is really weird, too. This is a bromeliad, and it's been um, adapted down low so we can see it easily. They're all related to pineapples, and they're essentially all pollinated by hummingbirds. And that's why they have these bright yellow modified leaves. 
as a flag to attract the hummingbird. The actual flower is down in the center there. Oh, nice. Yeah. So what do we have here? This is the heliconia flower. And uh, it's another hummingbird pollinated plant. And it's interesting, the red bits aren't the flowers. These are modified bases of leaves. It's not so obvious here, but I can show you later. I can prove that these are modified leaves. The flower is only this bit. Oh. Right? And you can see that it's very well designed for the hummingbird to come and sip the nectar and get pollen deposited, on, deposited onto his forehead. Uh -huh. Right? And then he goes to the other flower and the, the pollen comes out. And um, when the fruits are ripe, they're bright blue to attract yeah. other birds that um, eat them and take the seeds to new places in the forest. Nice. Puma Panga, it's a Marantese seed. It's got beautiful red splotches underneath. It's a medicine. They make tea that women can drink at childbirth to help control the bleeding. And just around it are these others uh, from the Piper ACE, the genus Peperomia. This group of plants is very important in Schwar medicine. Some of the species are for digestive things, others are for female things. One species, they give the juice of three leaves to newborn babies in the mouth so the baby will be stronger and not get sick so easily. Oh, right? nice. Our theory on why they give it is to eliminate the meconium, the first poop from the newborn baby that's like black tar. Uh -huh. It doesn't come from milk or anything, it's just garbage. And um, so by getting rid of that black tar, it's opening up the way for mom's colostrum to pass defenses in the best way. Right, right. right. The Schwa are also interpreting that it's helping the baby's liver to work right. right. And all of these bits of knowledge are secret legacies passed from generation to generation among the indigenous people, especially among the Schwa. Um, modern medicine knows all the pieces of that story, but they don't know the right plant to give. They're not asking the Schwa, and the Schwa wouldn't tell them. Right? <laughs> this is a small palm tree. Turusi? Turuhi. Turuhi. This is a palm tree? Uh, it's a small palm tree. Oh, it has some pods there. And um, the, these are the flowers about to open. They get pollinated by euglossine beads that look like emeralds. And it's one of the best leaves for making the roof of the house. Uh, a roof made with these leaves can last over 20 years if there's people living in the house cooking on wood fires. The smoke goes up all the time, it's drying out the leaves, killing bacteria, fungus, and insects. Ceremonies and festivities, different things, and they have lots of different plants for doing that. And this is one of them. It's called Ipiak Numi in Shuar. It's got this bright orange sap, right, it's a latex. Excellent for painting the skin. Yeah, these other ones, that's achote, right? Uh -huh, yeah, it looks achote. almost like the same thing. But let that dry. The achote is going to come off today when you wash your hands. Yeah. And, and this will usually take several days to come off. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, it's a resin that's drying there. And in the time that it takes to come off, it's really good for your skin. It's nourishing the skin, helping to erase blemishes from old cuts and scratches, insect bites that have left a mark, um, marks from acne, all those different things. We know how to combine it with other plants and bathe whole faces, whole bodies. And the way we mix it with other plants, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't, we, we don't keep the orange color, we combine it with other things. Uh -huh. So it looks like you have a nice suntan and your friends just wonder, hey, when did you go to the beach and you didn't, didn't invite me? Uh -huh. <laughs> that's the Ungurawa palm, and that one's a baby. <laughs> that's a baby? Yeah, and um, th this is the Morete palm, and it's also a baby. It'll get much, much bigger. It'll have a big trunk, maybe 30 meters long. And um, that's one of the things about palms that most people don't know, is that they always grow higher and higher. The new leaf is always on top. Right, so, so a palm tree, uh, you know, a normal palm tree that has a long stem um, will always get taller and taller. It can't just stay one height. And uh, 
the Moretti palm is very important in Amazonia. It's the only species of tree that can live where the land is flooded with stagnant water all year. Oh. Right? Um, and we have these huge palm swamps, all populated just with this one species, thousands and thousands of hectares. It's also the source of three really good foods. The heart of palm, which is forming on the inside there, is uh, uh, really big, really delicious. The fruit is about this big. It's got scales that look exactly like snake scales. Yeah, you have to know how to prepare it, and the food is sweet and sour. It's very delicious. The best food we get two months after cutting the tree down. We come back with axes and machetes. We split open the tree trunk. In the spongy part inside, we now find lots of beetle larvae. The Chantakuru? Chantakura. Right? Kura. Huh. They're this big. And um, you might be thinking, no, thank you. We're not no, I ate good. them a week yeah. ago or so. And I always said, I, I did it on, on, on video. And I, I said, that is the best thing I've ever put in my mouth. It was, I mean, I cooked it with garlic and, and kind of gringoed it a little bit. But, uh, but it is super delicious. Uh -huh. and, um, and it's an arthropod not so different from shrimp. Most people don't think twice about eating What shrimp. did I say? That's exactly right? what I said. <laughs> right? But they're living in a totally clean place. They're in the middle of the tree trunk, in the middle of nature. Very different from modern shrimp ponds with all the water pollution coming from the city, all the chemicals going straight in. Or the Gulf of Mexico right? that's full of feces and oil and... Yep, yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, it's even a medicine. Uh, just eating it, it's really good for our lungs. It's good to give to asthmatic children. Yeah, and we were told by a Quechua woman that it's good for your throat. Uh-huh. Yeah, good for the respiratory tract in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is a, a palm tree with stilt roots. And I was explaining that um, the, the reason for the stilt roots is to give them more physical stability, right? Uh, especially in the face of... The soil often being totally saturated with water, right? And um, individual roots might it might break or slip out of the of the mud, and um, and so it has a a more stable base. And this is a walking palm. It can walk over two meters in its lifetime, looking for more light. What? This one only walked a little bit uh, <laughs> because it had good light. The seed sprouted exactly here. I know because it's smooth, with its spiny roots, it has walked a few centimeters to the left toward where there's more light, right? Mm -hmm. This is a new root that just recently connected to the soil. It came splitting out of the bark, and in less than a month, it was attached. It grows really fast, wow. it's really flexible. Only after attaching, the sharp spines come out, right? Um, people use these to grate food. What do they do for the tree? They help to defend the tree against huge animals that don't exist anymore. The Pleistocene megafauna. Animals you might know through a movie called Ice Age. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the mammoth, the giant ground sloth. Those animals would want to push the tree over and eat the heart of palm. Uh huh. Even an elephant pushing on this would say, no thank you. Very yep. beautiful. Let's go eat something else. I've definitely gone to catch myself a few times and made this mistake, mm. and yeah, it's not, not pleasant. Nope. Mm -mm. All those huge animals were driven to extinction by people killing them to eat them only 15,000 years ago when we arrived in South America. It's a very short time in the evolution of trees. They still have their defenses. Oh, wow. It's just everywhere. Uh, so, uno de gato. Uno de gato. Cat's claw. Um, it has curved, sharp spines, looking like cat's claws. Here's some. Right? Oh, wow. That's where it gets its name, all right. Yeah, so it helps to climb up the trees. And these lianas, this is a type of liana, they can be much older than the tree they're growing on, which is surprising. That you wouldn't think that could be the case, but they're well adapted that if the tree falls, they can get twisted and crushed and everything without breaking and dying, and then they grow up the next tree. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the individual liana can be much older than the tree it's on. And um, uh, this one is very bitter. 
and it's a big medicine for purifying the body, reducing swelling, even for combating cancer, arthritis, stomach ulcers, prostate inflammation, and for improving the body's defenses in general. Mm -hmm. Teresa almost always has it ready. She's almost always mixing it with other plants, depending on what's going on with each patient. Mm -hmm. And normally it's a really bitter extract. You take one or two tablespoons, one hour before each meal, three times per week, in general, depending on what's going on with the person. Yes, and one? everything that you said, I read, has been confirmed in clinical studies. The, the tree is curious. It's got its whole head bowed down. I'm not sure if you can see that. I think you can see yeah. it. Yeah. And it's not from shame. This is the way the tree grows. The, the whole head came from a single bud. It opened up, expanded three times as long. It looked like a pink rag. This is another case of pouring out foliage, right? The insects can't be there waiting. If they find the tender new leaves, they can't eat them all, right? So in, in uh, three days, it's three times as long. Looks like a pink rag. It starts turning green and lifting up. In six months, it's at this angle again. It puts out a new bud. It's only exposing the tender new leaves to the insects one day every six months. Oh, wow. And uh, it's called Cruz Caspi, Tree of the Cross in Quichua in Spanish, because if we cut through the trunk, we actually see a cross in the middle of the wood. The bark, together with other plants, is used to make a contraceptive tea that women can drink and not get pregnant for one, two, or three months, depending on the recipe. If the woman takes a stronger dose every month for more than three months, she's done. No more children ever much more sophisticated, much less invasive than what they do in the modern hospital. You know what they do, but I'm going to remind you. Uh, <laughs> if the woman doesn't want any more children and she tells the modern doctor, uh, they'll put her under anesthesia. She can die of the anesthesia not being done right. That happens sometimes in Ecuador. Then they cut her open in her most delicate part and start tying things up. If they don't do that, they give her artificial hormones and little pills, injections, implants that later damage her body and everyone's body downstream. Those chemicals don't de get destroyed in the woman's body, they come out in her urine. They can do all the wastewater treatment anywhere in the world, they can't get those chemicals back out. It's the same thing with antibiotics, antidepressives, cancer chemotherapy, cocaine, mm -hmm. caffeine, it all ends up in the river. It's affecting the fish, in the next city, everyone's drinking those chemicals, bathing in those chemicals. It's a little bit ridiculous. The ocean is uh, testing positive for benzodiazepines, like Xanax and Klonopin. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> just random <laughs> selections in, in, the, in the ocean. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and there are alternatives, right? We can build our urine diverting dry toilets. We can filter the urine into the soil. No one has any contact with it. It's getting more treatment. We're fertilizing the plants. Right, so there are altern alternatives. First, we have to recognize the problem. Uh -huh. right. Groups that have different levels of knowledge, and mm -hmm. the star are among the champions. Yeah. And uh, this is um, a tree from the Hediosmum genus. It's called Tarti in Spanish, Campuntin Weiss in Schwar. It's got a nice smell. It's really good for making tea. You can just drink normally, but it's especially important for women that have just given birth. They make a lot of tea three days after giving birth. They drink it, they bathe in it. It's to purify the woman's body after the pregnancy, right? Things build up in the, in the woman's body during the pregnancy. You can't do anything about it while the baby's there because the baby would be affected. But once the baby's out, you can purify mom. Ungurawa. Shiwa. Those are all different names? Different languages. Uh, yeah. And uh, these things are crazy. Yeah, this is a palm tree with huge leaves. It's one of the leaves the Warani used to make their house. Yeah, it doesn't last very long. And they didn't want the house for more than nine months because they had huge territories with over a thousand hectares per person. So in one year they hunt a lot of animals in this one part of the forest. The house is starting to leak water, they get tired of living there, they burn down that house, pick up their things and go walking. One day or two days within their same territory, 
We build a new house in two or three days with these big palm leaves. No problem. And it's in a place where they'd planted peach palm six years before. One year before they'd planted bananas and manioc. So they have all this food. <laughs> Ready to go. Before they move there, they're not wiping out anything anywhere. It's very different from us. They get the fiber for the blowgun dart. When the tree is older, it produces a lot of fruits. Each fruit is about this big. It's one big seed with one millimeter of an oily food on the outside. Very delicious. We can dissolve it into water, sweeten it, strain it, and it's like hot chocolate, sort of. The oil pure is really good for our hair. Strengthens the hair, avoiding split ends, hair loss, dandruff. So this is a copal tree. It's the source of the very well-known incense and fire starter. Wow, that's a scary looking little spiky thing on the back of the leaf there. Yeah. Is it a seed pod or? No. No. Yeah, this leaf has hairy balls. Uh-huh. It's part of the defense system. And here's the inhabitant. Right, the little ants. Oh, the ants that taste uh -huh. just like lemons. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Anyway, it's a duplex. There's two doors here and here. It's a duplex and we just destroyed their home. And there's all the babies, uh -huh. right? And um, and most ants taste really bad because they've got formic acid. These taste really good because they've got citric acid. Yeah, they taste just, they must have terpenoids too because they taste just like lemons. Uh-huh. Did you get enough? Oh, I've, I've had them. Uh-huh. I, I, I don't really want to eat the eggs. You don't want to eat the it's eggs, weird. is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah, so it's a good case of mutualism mm -hmm. where the two species don't just live together, but they're actually helping each other. Mm -hmm. right? the, the ant gets housing, food, and water, and the plant gets protection. Um, you see that those leaves have been chewed up a little bit, but if the ants weren't there, the plant wouldn't exist. Right? Um, because if an, another insect comes and chews on it, the ants attack them. I know a lot. Whoa, that uh, guy's. So here is a very young ayahuasca vine crawling up the tree. Ayahuasca is the main plant for getting visions in the Amazon. Mm -hmm. right. It's the stem itself that gets cooked together with other plants. It's cooked all day until it's very bitter, very thick. Um, the expert who's leading us will give us a small amount at 7 o'clock at night. Right, we drink it in one, two, three, or four hours. It's usually violent vomiting, diarrhea, almost can't walk. And if the person has fasted correctly, if the dose is right, it's like a television lighting up in your mind, and you see pieces of your future, new medicinal plants, advice to live better. You can communicate with deceased loved ones. Um, Lots of information through ayahuasca. You know, it's getting more and more proven clinically to help with deep psychological problems like childhood trauma, sexual abuse, drug, abu drug addiction, PTSD, all these things that floats up and washes away. Uh, Teresa prepares it mainly when people convince her that they want to do it for the correct reasons, that they're going to take everything seriously they're going to do the fasting and she especially likes to do sessions of all women she explains that if there's one man anywhere nearby the women can't release what they need to release 